Hi, I'm M from 21 Readers. Happy Oscar weekend to all who celebrate. The Oscars are this Sunday. Oscar Sunday is my version of Super Bowl Sunday. I've seen every Best Picture nominee since getting into the Oscars in 2012, the year that Argo won, and Life of Pi won Best Director. That's the season that I started getting into the Oscars. And this year is no different, in which I was invested in the whole award show season, following who's getting nominated, and of course seeing all the Best Picture nominees. This year they have 10 Best Picture nominees, and I'm recommending a book for each of the Best Picture nominees. And the way that I went about this is I thought about the themes of the films and then associated a book that has similar themes or that had something about the book that reminded me of the film. Some of the films that are nominated are based on books. Dune, The Power of the Dog, and Nightmare Alley are based on books, which I have not read. And Drive My Car is based on a short story. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order, starting with Belfast and ending with West Side Story. And at the end, I will also include my personal rankings for how much I enjoyed this year's Best Picture noms. I will put timestamps in the description. First we have Belfast. This film surrounds themes of family. It takes place in Ireland during the Troubles. It grapples with religion and we're also told the story through a child's eyes. Since the film explored a tragedy and family and hardship through the eyes of a child, I will be recommending The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. The Kite Runner is a historical fiction. This could be argued by some as a classic. This one takes place in Afghanistan and is told through the eyes of a child and follows his his whole life during hard times in Afghanistan with the rule of the Taliban and it is a beautiful story about family, about hardship, and told through the eyes of a child. Next we have CODA which stands for Child of a Deaf Adult. This film explores themes of family, disability, and music. For this film I will be recommending The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. The Violin Conspiracy is a mystery thriller. This book follows a black man on his journey to become a classical musician while also trying to figure out who stole his expensive violin. This book is similar to this film in that we're following a main character where the odds of their circumstances might be stacked against them but they are still trying to pursue music as their passion and they rely on people that care about them to support them through their journey through music. Next is Don't Look Up. The main theme of this film is a doomsday scenario due to climate change where we are exploring different people's reaction to the end of the world happening and for this film I will be recommending Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is a thriller where there's also a doomsday situation happening and we are exploring how different people react to that reality. So there were definite similarities there with this doomsday element and just an unsettling tone throughout both the film and this book of the end of the world coming and how people respond. Next is Drive My Car, the first Japanese film to be nominated for Best Picture. This film really explored the themes of grief, finding purpose in life, relationships with loved ones, and connecting with others through the process of grief and in general it explores deeper questions about the meaning of life. For this film I would recommend Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This is a Japanese book translated into English where we're following a main character who's questioning what it means to have a meaningful life in her career as a convenience store worker. This book explores what it means to have a purposeful life and for your life to have meaning and to feel fulfilled in your career. And some of those big underarching questions in Convenient Store Woman are also found in Drive My Car with those big existential questions about having a meaningful life. Next is Dune, a sci-fi epic that was visually stunning and took place in this sci-fi world in the future. And for this film, I'm recommending Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is a science fiction book that takes place mostly in space. And when I was reading Project Hail Mary, I felt totally immersed in this space world in this futuristic setting just like I felt when I was watching Dune feeling completely immersed in this sci-fi world in the future setting. So Project Hail Mary was a completely immersive science fiction experience just like Dune was an immersive science fiction experience. Next is King Richard. In this film we're exploring Richard Williams who paved the way for his daughters Venus and Serena Williams to have a flourishing tennis career. In the film we're exploring topics of overcoming adversity as well as topics of race as well as overcoming the odds as well as just relying on family to be there for you. For this film I'm recommending Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is a young adult book that's the prequel to The Hate You Give. Concrete Rose takes place in the 90s and we're following our main character who's a teenager and he finds out that his girlfriend is pregnant so he makes changes to his life to make sure that he can provide for his daughter and so he overcomes adversity and the circumstances he's given in order to make a new life for himself in order to pave the way for his 
his daughter and readers can read about how his daughter's future turned out in The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas because Concrete Rose is about the dad of the main character in The Hate You Give. So I thought that was a similar connection there where as the viewer of King Richard, we know how the story turns out since Venus and Serena become legendary tennis players. And so in Concrete Rose, since it's the prequel, we know how the story turns out. If you've read The Hate You Give or seen the film The Hate You Give, you know how that story turns out. Both of these books, The Hate You Give and Concrete Rose, explore race, explore police brutality, and both are eye-opening reads as well. Next is Licorice Pizza. This takes place in the 70s in California. This one's a comedy coming-of-age story, and at the center of this film, there's this unique character dynamic of the main two characters in terms of their relationship. The male character is a teenager who used to be a child actor, and then the female main character is in her mid-20s just trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. So the duo has a unique relationship that you can't help but be intrigued by what they're gonna do next. In terms of what I'm gonna remember about the film, I'm definitely gonna remember that unique relationship and because of that I'm gonna be recommending a book that's a mystery thriller called The One by John Mars. This book centers around several unique relationships that are set up by a futuristic dating service where you submit your DNA and then the service matches you up with who your soulmate is. A lot of the relationships from that book I still remember as being unique and something I've never read about before and so that's why I'm recommending it for Licorice Pizza because the relationship dynamic of the main couple if you will in this film was very odd but will stick with me just like the relationships in The One by John Mars. Next is Nightmare Alley. This film follows our main character who's very flawed and has a tough backstory. The film itself is very dark and darker than I expected. Since this film we're following this flawed main character and the film ended up being darker than I was expected, I would recommend the book called The Plot by Jean Honf Korolitz, which is a mystery thriller. And in this book we're following a main character. He's an English professor and he ends up becoming a bit of a scammer by stealing one of his former students' story to come up with his own best-selling novel. And that's the premise of the book. And the book ended up being darker than I expected. And in general the tone of the plot is is just very tense and dark. Just like how I felt watching Nightmare Alley, the whole tone was just tense and dark. So that's the similarities I see there with the plot and with Nightmare Alley. We have the flawed main character scamming people. It ends up being darker than I expected. And overall, the whole experience was just a dark, mysterious tone and atmosphere. Next, we have The Power of the Dog. And some big themes from this film include Wild West, Cowboys, and there are LGBT themes in this book, including those of being repressed and repression. And due to the LGBT themes and themes of repression, I'm going to recommend the book Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jadrowski. This book takes place in 1980s Poland during the rise of communism and it's an LGBT literary fiction book and we're following our two main characters and these characters cannot be together since one is on the side of communism and one is not. The Power of the Dog takes place in the 1920s in Montana on a cowboy ranch and Swimming in the Dark takes place in 1980s Poland when communism is on the rise. So those are different however the themes of LGBT but having to be repressed or Closeted based on your circumstances in terms of setting and time period are similar. And finally, we have West Side Story directed by Steven Spielberg. West Side Story takes place in 1950s New York and we have two rival gangs and we follow a love story as well as the rival gangs. West Side Story is of course a classic Broadway musical as well as a classic film. And so for this one, I'm going to recommend a nonfiction text called Razzle Dazzle by Michael Riedel. This one explores how Broadway kind of came to be in its golden age in terms of what was happening behind the scenes to get these Broadway musicals produced, to build Times Square and the Broadway district into what it is today. So I would recommend it especially to people who are into Broadway musicals and fascinated by the New York Broadway theater scene. This one's a great behind the scenes look in terms of producer decisions, director decisions, how the Broadway theater empire got its start. Those were the 10 books I would recommend for the 10 best picture nominees this year and here are my personal rankings from favorite to least favorite 1 to 10 of how I would rank this year's best picture nominees. This year was another fun Oscar season. I'm already working on my spreadsheet to see what I think could be nominated for next year's Oscars because Oscar season never sleeps. I hope you enjoy the Oscars on Sunday night. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on any of these films or books mentioned. And for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.